Hello and welcome to Dog Day Chess. In this episode, we're going to look at a game from beginning to end. This game had a good mixture of tactics and strategy, so I think it'll be beneficial to look at it in its entirety and see how those elements come together to produce uh, the final outcome of this game. Now, I'm playing black, and the opponent I'm playing is rated almost 100 points higher than me, and he started by playing h4 which is an unusual opening move. Um, I think he was trying to get me out of book, um, but I answered by uh, taking uh, control of the center, and he proceeded to push the h-pawn further still, and so at this point I put the brakes on that, and then he brought out his d-pawn. So I exchanged the pawns, knowing that that would bring his queen out prematurely and allow me to develop one or two more pieces uh, with tempo, in other words, while attacking the queen. And I do that with the knight, and the queen moves over, checking me, um, but I block that with my bishop. And then he moves his uh, e-pawn out, that would clear a line for his bishop. And I develop my other knight, again with tempo. So the queen falls back here, and then yet another move. This is a discovered attack on the queen. So I've made three developing moves where white has not made any, just moved his queen around. Again, one of the uh, drawbacks of bringing your queen out too early. So the queen falls back here to d3, and here I move my knight out. And I, what the intent wasn't really to attack the queen, it was to put pressure on this c2 square, because this square would be a dream square for my knight. If I could get there, I'd be forking the rook and the king. So, while well, white has other ideas, white brings the queen uh, back here. Um, I don't know if he was trying to get me to bring my knight back to block it, but my knight is protected by my bishop. So, I'm just going to move my bishop here to block it and counterattack the queen. That This b-pawn is now undefended, but if the queen comes and takes that pawn, then I can just do the fork that I've been wanting to do. But that's not going to happen. He brings the queen back to defend the c2 forking square. So now I develop my bishop, adding more pressure to c2. And white brings the knight out to defend c2. Uh, the knight is here on the side. There's a saying that the knight, a knight on the rim is dim, meaning that when a knight is on the edge, the number of pieces it controls is uh, much more limited than if it's in the center. And I centralize my knight more. And then white brings his bishop out. I don't know, maybe he was trying to castle long. But at this point I decided to capture the bishop, exchange my knight for the bishop. That will at least give me the bishop pair. We talked about the bishop pair in a previous episode. And now I make a move. It's a, a prophylactic move because it's pre preventing um, white from moving either his knight or his bishop to b5. So instead, white moves his bishop out to d3. Now he's got three defenders on c2, and uh, so I give up my plans to, on, on, on attacking c2. So instead, I decide to exchange another knight for another bishop. And so if you look at the situation now, we've got a, a material imbalance in that I've got two bishops against two knights. But more importantly, my two bishops are very active, the board is quite open, there's a lot of scope for, for movement for them, whereas both of his knights are on the edge of the board and they're not very useful where they are. So here I push my d-pawn. I figured that if he, tr if he trades off the pawns, I'll bring my queen out, now, and that'll allow me to castle long, and if he pushes the pawn, then he'll create a weakness on d3. So he does decide to push the pawn and before retreating my bishop, I make this in-between move. I attack the queen. And I thought that if he comes and tries to block it with the f-pawn, I'll be able to check the king and force the king to move. And that's exactly what happens. He blocks it with the pawn. I bring my bishop over to h4, check. That forces the king to move. And now white can no longer castle. So now I've got to deal with my bishop that's under attack. I bring it back here. White brings his knight out to a better position, and I bring my queen out, and I'm clearing the way to castle. But this is a mistake. I needed to take care of something first. 
um, I'm open to being forked here, and that's exactly what happens. The knight comes out, forks my bishop and my pawn, and that's going to win my pawn. So I move my bishop to safety, knight captures my pawn, so now I'm down a pawn. So I proceed to castle as I had intended, and white pushes his pawn. Then I bring my queen here to attack the, uh, the knight. The knight is not protected by anything, and I'm also putting pressure on this f2 square. So the knight falls back out of the line of attack of that queen, and I follow that up by bringing my bishop here. And that unleashes my rook on this file, and it also doubles the attack on this knight. Because of this move, this knight is not really protected by this pawn, because this pawn is pinned to the queen by the rook. So white pushes the other pawn to help protect it, and now I saw this move. I actually captured that pawn with my rook. Now it might look like I'm just giving up my rook, but this rook is poisoned. If this queen captures that rook, then there's something I can do uh, that'll win the game. So if you want, you can pause the video and have a look and see if you can find it. Okay, well, if the queen should capture the rook, then my queen can swoop in here with checkmate because the queen here is defending the mating square. Uh, she can't leave the defense of that square. She can't take that rook. So she's got to move out of the line of attack of that rook. And it, then I can exchange these minor pieces and I'll pick up an extra pawn. And um, that worked out pretty well, except for the fact that my rook is now pinned to my queen. So I'm going to have to deal with that. Here, white blunders, right? He brings his knight out here. I assume he's trying to fork my rook and my queen with the knight, not realizing that this forking square is controlled by my bishop. So here I pick up a free knight, and I'm pretty happy about that. So white proceeds to attack the pinned rook again. When a piece is pinned, usually the, a good thing to do is to attack it again, because running away is not an option. So the most the other person can do is defend the pin piece, and I'm able to do that with my rook, bring it to the defense. And then white moves his rook over to the E file. Now I expected him to bring it to the D file, adding another attacker to my pin piece. Instead, he moved it to the E file, which is a closed file. I don't know why he did that. But that allows me to consolidate my pieces a little better. And um, now I, I get rid of the pin on my rook. I've created this battery on the D file and I'm looking to exchange some pieces because I'm ahead in material I'm slightly ahead, a bishop in a pawn and when you are ahead in material it's usually beneficial for you to exchange pieces because the fewer pieces there are left on the board the more effective your material advantage is so that's exactly what happens we proceed to exchange off a bunch of the major pieces but it's important when you're exchanging not only to look at what you're exchanging but also to look at what's left after the exchange and what's left after this exchange is I'm left with a rook on an open file, which is very desirable. And his rook is still on the closed file. Now I move my rook up, and now my rook's on the second rank, which is also desirable. It's attacking this A pawn. So white moves the pawn up, and I bring in my rook behind it. The best way to attack a pawn with a rook is to get the rook behind the pawn. Similarly, the best way to defend your pawn with your rook is to get your rook behind your pawn. So white tries to defend, well he does defend the pawn with his own rook. And I bring my bishop over here to g3. I'm trying to get some counterplay on this f2 square uh, between my bishop and my rook at the king, with the king right beside it. And white doesn't like that idea. He attacks my bishop leaving the defense of the pawn. Um, I have to move my bishop and he goes back to defending the pawn. Now I make a move which uh, I was rushed when I made this move. I was running out of time and I made it knowing full well that it would lose me a pawn but I knew that it would gain me some counterplay here on F2 and you'll see why. So after we exchange pawns the rook can slide here and fork my bishop and my pawn and that will win the pawn. So I bring my bishop over to g3 again and the rook takes the pawn and now I can get the counterplay I was looking for. I can bring my rook over to f2, finally. Now, the king has only two moves. 
if the king should move to e1, then I'll win the white rook because I'll just slide my rook over to the b file. That'll be a discovered check on the king by the bishop, and I'll be able to win the rook. If he moves over to g1, uh, well, that's what happens in the game. So let's follow that through. So from here, I can move my rook over onto the e file, and I, I think of this as a fork. I'm forking this e4 pawn, and I'm forking the mating square, right? In other words, I can move my rook over here to e1, and that would be checkmate. It's kind of a double threat. And so white brings his rook back to defend the mating square. Now, I could at this point easily just capture this pawn, but I saw here that there's an opportunity to force a simplification, to force the rooks off the board. And again, with my material advantage, I felt that I'd be better able to capitalize it if there are fewer major pieces on the board. So I come here with check and this forces the rook exchange and white proceeds to push the pawn now I bring my bishop back to g3 and this move has two purposes it's attacking this pawn and it's also uh, taking away the white king's most direct route to the center which is where the king wants to go so now he's got to take a slightly more roundabout way to get there and I can get the pawn the king comes to the center I push my passed pawn, king comes further, I need to get my king into the center, and the white king blockades my passed pawn, and I come up to defend it. Now things get interesting. So he pushes his pawn two squares, and I answer by pushing my pawn. And now white is in Zugzwang. This is a German word, it means the compulsion to move, and it every move is a bad move for white. White has to move. These are the rules of the game. But what move can he make? If he pushes this pawn, he's going to lose it. Uh, the only other move is that he's got to move his king somewhere that will no longer be blockading my passed pawn. So every move is a bad move for white. So he does move his king over. And I do move my king up, taking the opposition. He moves his king back in front of my passed pawn as, as much as it can be. And then I come up in front of my passed pawn again with the opposition. So as you've seen in previous videos, the way to get your pawn promoted in a king versus king situation is that your king needs to be ahead of your pawn. So the white king has to give way. And I move over to the side and I've created a corridor for my pawn to pass safely to promotion. So the white king uh, comes back down. I think his plans are to attack the base of my pawn chain. I guess he realizes that he won't be able to stop this pawn from promoting. And so we continue on our respective journeys. And promotion. King makes it to the base of my pawn chain, but then my queen swoops in and takes care of business. So now I have to be careful not to stalemate. Um, so I, the, I'm going to, I want to get rid of these pieces that are really in the way from me del delivering the final checkmate. So I'm going to uh, get rid of these pawns. And I wish my own pawns were not there, frankly. Um, but I get rid of those, and I don't mind that the king is take, takes my black pawn. I get my own pawn up and out of the way, because I want to be able to deliver the, a clean checkmate with my queen and my bishop bring my queen over and the king takes this pawn and now there's a mate in one for black so if you like you can pause the video and try to find it okay well here it is bishop to f4 checkmate and that was it so uh, this game again had a, a good mixture of tactics and strategy and it had a lot of different elements um, it had a material imbalance of bishops versus knights it had uh, Zugzwang, it had opposition, it had the idea of simplifying to make your material advantage more effective, the idea of bringing rooks behind pawns to attack them. So there are a lot of different elements uh, in this game, and that's why I thought it, was, uh, it would be beneficial to show it from beginning to end. So as always, I hope you, got, you learned something from this episode, and thanks for watching.